I know some people might think, this guy is a, an insurance adjuster. What in the great blue hell could he tell me about comfortably planning for my retirement? I don't know. I don't know what you already know, but let, let's first try to clear up and understand what my 11 plus years in the insurance industry, most recently insurance adjuster and insurance appraiser has to do with a comfortable retirement. Well, I'm a licensed public insurance adjuster. Prior to that, I was a licensed independent adjuster. And prior to that, I was a licensed insurance producer in 40 plus states. If I were to ask you who regulates those licenses, do you know? And I think a, a logical person, a reasonable person who wasn't going to go straight to Google might surmise that, OK, I only deal with insurance when it's dealing with my car or it's dealing with my house or it's dealing with my apartment or dealing with some technology that I just bought. So they must be regulated by some kind of property type of entity or organization, some type of uh, some type of building code entity or some type of property manage and acquisitions and and standards of doing business type of entity. No. Who regulates those licenses? Public insurance adjuster, independent adjuster, uh, even if you're a staff adjuster insurance producer is regulated by the Department of Financial Services. Yeah. That insurance that you have on your car, that insurance that you have on your house, it's not insuring that property itself. No. It's insuring the possibility and dare I say it, likelihood of the liability that you just inherited by acquiring those properties. Because guess what? If you never owned a car, you would have never gotten into an accident with that person. That caused thousands of dollars of damage to that car that caused them and their family members to have to go to the hospital. You would have never been in the car. It would have never happened. But because you acquired that property, now that possibility now exists. And because you have that property, boom, now, now all of a sudden you're on a hook for hundreds of thousands of dollars, hospital bills, uh, car repair bills. Did I mention that person was driving a Bugatti? Or that house? Now you own that house, that house that most people invest majority of their money that they earn in their life into. Most of that is interest that the bank is earning, but that's another story. But still, you invest so much money into something and then all of a sudden something happens to that house. This house that you in your mind and, and what you've observed has been gaining equity. This house that is your plan for retirement, this house is that the one that you're going to, your starter house, the one that you're going to use to finally drop by your dream home. The one that's going to generate that kind of equity. That kind of money as a tool needed to turn the screws of a great life for you. But what happens when something happens to it? Uh, a covered event that's covered in your policy. Something happens to it. You need money to get back right. And if you're like most Americans, you probably live in check to check anyway. To where if you went more than three months without a check, 
you could be homeless like most Americans. Not you, you different though. That's okay. So when this covered event happens and maybe your insurance company comes out and say, well, uh, I don't even think it should be covered. This is your insurance company talking now. To be honest, I don't even think it should be covered, but you know, maybe, you know, if it, if it was covered, it'll be about $600 worth of damage. So, uh, you know, just sign here agreeing that it's about $600 worth of damage. And, and by the way, um, your deductible is $1,000. So that means you get nothing. So what, what happens if you just take that for an answer? And let's say the cost of repairs to reasonably repair your property was $100,000. What you think that hundred thousand just vanishes in the air? It just poof, gone? No, it's coming from your equity. Even if it's hid behind the walls, if 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 you have a buyer that's about to purchase your property, they're gonna hire a building inspector. And if this building inspector knows what he's doing, he or she is doing, they're gonna find what's wrong with that house, and then they're gonna circle it on a picture in their report. And in this report, this potential buyer is going to use to leverage to either back out of the deal or get you to substantially reduce your asking price. That's where that money went. And because you own that property, somebody can get hurt on that property, too. So once again, insurance isn't insurance to the property because, you know, if they get hurt you're legally re responsible for their bills if if you did something that could be construed or uh, reasonably considered negligent so remember so you know that little that that uh sidewalk next to your driveway that's kind of a little cricket it's not you know it's not too cricket it's not crazy but it's a little cricket it's a, it's a little uneven going from one cement block to the next it's just slightly uneven that 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 friend or cousin you don't even like that much trips over it. Now all of a sudden you're responsible for their hospital bills because guess what? As a as a uh, as a home and landowner, you should have fixed that sidewalk. It's your fault. I'm the one that comes in and helps the insurance companies. And every all parties involved, homeowners, business owners, property owners, realize that as it relates as a public insurance adjuster or as an insurance appraiser. And guess what? An insurance appraiser is that's a person that when the, the homeowner, business owner or public adjuster or an attorney on both sides can't seem to agree. They send it to me and say, you know what? You're a reasonable man and you know how to talk to these people. Let's hey, Get a deal done because we can't seem to get it done. And guess what we talking? We talking turkey. We talking numbers, money. So once again, how can somebody in my position after 11 years, 11 plus years in the insurance industry help you with planning for your financial future? Because that's, that's what I've already, already been doing. I just showed you how insurance makes sure that your financial future stays intact and is regulated by the, uh, the, the Department of Financial Services in each state. The same people that you would go to and pay an arm and a leg to just to specifically talk the money. I don't just talk the money because it's not about how much you make, it's how much you keep. Maybe those people in, the, in that on that side that's only been on that side only know about how to how much to make, how to make it make. But if you were raised by some people that have sense. Or if you had mentors that put you on game, they let you know it's not about how much you make, it's how much you keep. I know how to keep, but I also know how to show you how to make. So that, that's, that's how I can help 
Uh, my name is Randolph Love the Third, Randolph Love Consulting LLC. I help business and homeowners retire comfortably, have the option of retiring comfortably after 10 to 15 years and avoid financial catastrophe. You're listening to the Entrepreneurs Podcast, the place to hear real entrepreneurs and business owners bear it all.